My girlfriend and I plan an international trip every year, and this time around, we happen to find ourselves exploring the beautiful countrysides of northern Italy. And as they tend to do, my travels had me inspired. But not over the trite scribble like language or history that I normally find myself losing a good night's sleep over. No, this time around, it was for an actual sane reason. How in the world do they get their focaccia to taste so damn good? I mean, come on, just listen to this. If that doesn't make your mouth water, then I don't know what will. But don't worry, I wouldn't be making this video if I didn't eventually figure out the secret ingredient to the focaccia, but we could save that for later. First, in order to kick it off, let's start with making a simple dough. You could start out by adding 5 and a third cup or 800 grams of all-purpose flour to the biggest bowl you have on hand. Follow that up with a half teaspoon of active dry yeast, and just go ahead and fully incorporate that in. Next, for the wet ingredients, add roughly 2.5 cups or 600 grams of lukewarm water to your dough. And I forgot to capture it on camera, but at this point you should also add about 18 grams of kosher salt. That may seem like a lot of salt, but we're making a lot of bread here. And other than the oil, this is the only thing really giving our bread flavor. Just give it a rough mix in with the spatula, and once it starts to resemble a shaggy dough, add in a quarter cup or about 50 grams of extra virgin olive oil. And don't skip out here, use the good stuff. Now, just stretch and fold the dough until you don't see any obvious pools of oil. You might want to also gently flour a workspace and gently knead for extra gluten development. But like I mentioned earlier, if you're not used to working with high hydration doughs, this might be a little tricky. If you're not up to it, just continue to stretch and fold, it should come out great. If you're going to go the stretch and fold route, usually two or three intervals of a few minutes separated by 10 to 20 minutes will develop enough gluten for this recipe. However, if you decide to go the knead route, don't add as much flour as you see me add here. This is a huge mistake. Working in all this additional flour will lower the hydration of your dough and cause your end product to be less airy and overly dense, which unfortunately happened to me here. I made this mistake here so that you guys don't have to. The focaccia I made during my test prior to this video turned out much better on account of me not adding any flour during the kneading process. With a little bit of practice and once you get into the rhythm of things, kneading sticky doughs becomes a lot easier. Once your dough starts to become supple and soft and feels less tacky, it's ready for the bulk ferment. Just cover your dough to prevent it from drying out and let it sit at room temperature for 12 to 14 hours or until doubled in volume. When your dough is properly risen, it's time to get this pillowy boy onto a baking sheet. Spread 2 to 3 tablespoons of oil onto a shallow rim baking sheet. When the dough is ready, release it from the sides of the bowl and ever so gently move it onto the baking sheet. Take extra care not to deflate any of the pockets of air in the dough. This is vital in getting that airy crust. It's finally time to reveal the secret to mouth-watering tender focaccia bread. It all comes down to the brine. Brine bread? Yeah, it sounds a little weird, but bear with me. Make the brine by stirring together about 5 grams of kosher salt and 80 grams of lukewarm water. Then, just like you see here, we're going to dimple the dough, pressing the pads of your first three fingers gently into the dough at an angle as to not deflate it. This technique is going to leave small valleys in the dough for the brine to settle into. When you bite into focaccia, you taste that crisp, fresh saltiness, even though there's no apparent salt on the surface. That's from the brine. It makes me wonder why people don't use this technique in other breads. Hmm, that might be an idea for another video. At this point, let the bread sit for about another 45 minutes until your dough is light and bubbly. This will help the dough replace any of the air pockets that were removed during the dimpling process. You don't have to worry about covering the dough either. If we've properly covered the dough with oil and brine, it should be enough to keep it from drying out. About 30 minutes into the final proof, adjust the rack into the center position of your oven and preheat it to about 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 235 degrees Celsius. Pop the focaccia in the oven and allow it to bake for about 25 to 30 minutes. You'll know that your focaccia is done when it starts to develop a golden brown crust. I even like to throw a few sprigs of fresh rosemary on top. This really helps it to develop that really great aromatic quality. This is really different than putting the rosemary directly in the dough. We're not going for a strong rosemary flavor here. We just want to toast the rosemary on top of the bread just so it leaves an essence behind. We're not really going for that strong rosemary flavor. After I add the rosemary, I just keep it in for about 5-7 to seven minutes. You'll know when it's done. After the bread is fully baked, remove it for the oven and let it cool. At this point, you can optionally brush the bread with some more olive oil, but I'll be dipping it in olive oil later, so that would just be overkill for my personal taste. But you do you. As tempting as it is to bite into fresh bread directly out of the oven, it's really important that you let your bread cool. Not only just to save your taste buds from melting off, also the cooling process is really important towards the curation of the bread crust. Letting it settle for a few minutes is really going to help develop that really crispy crust. When you take it out of the oven, it's still continuing to cook. And when you cut into it, you're releasing tons of heat and steam that's still stored inside the bread. So if you cut into it too fast, you can end up ruining your bread. There's something magical about bread. I don't know if it's the simple beauty of 
two simple ingredients coming together under the right circumstances to create this almost indescribably delicious thing. Or maybe it's the bait and switch of how making bread is so easy and approachable to start doing today, but so impossibly difficult to master. Or maybe it's the objective scoreboard that we can use to measure our progression. The damn good loaf of bread is a damn good loaf of bread. I don't give a fuck who you are. But that's enough rambling for this video. All that aside, I really urge you to try this bread recipe at home. Whether you're just getting into baking or want to impress your friends and family when you have them over for Italian, it's a surefire home run. That being said, if you like this video or learned something new, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, or comment down below with any thoughts or topics you'd like to see in future videos. All the user engagement really helps promote my videos for the YouTube algorithm and your support will not go unappreciated. With that being said, I hope you guys have the happiest of holidays and I'll see you guys on the next episode.